All right, this is going to be the build of the Y-axis in this build of the Mantis PCB mill. And to do this section, we're going to need the front piece, looks like this, or the, the rear piece, the front piece, two of the 10-inch rods, and four of the bushings. And before we actually do any drilling or assembly, we're going to have to test a few things. First of all, we can't tell you what size of mounting holes you're going to, or what size of mounting screws you're going to need for your stepper motors because stepper motors vary continuously in price and availability and uh, what size these are. So they may be number four, or in this case, they're actually M3, so uh, yeah, three millimeter. So in this case, because of the heads that are on here, we're going to end up countersinking the inside this being the outside because there are dimples here for the Phillips screws to uh, hold the assembly together. The motor is going to go on the outside and we're going to actually countersink a little bit on these holes to get these heads below the surface so that the bed does not hit them. So that may vary depending on where you got your stepper motors from and what these mounting holes are. The other thing you have to mention, you have to check is the exact size of this hole versus the size of this lip on the stepper motor. Depending on how you made your rear piece, you may have cut it on a CNC, in which case it'll probably be right, but if you have laid it out by hand and cut it on a table saw or band saw, which is an option, then you may need to sand this out a bit until you can pretty much just get that lip of the stepper motor in there. So you want to do that before you do any assembly. Another thing you want to check if, especially if you haven't uh, cut them on a CNC, is you want to make sure that your sides are straight and that you have 90 degree corners. This was actually cut on a, a CNC machine, so it's okay. So there's a little piece right here that's a failure to cut through, so we'll be sanding that off before we do the final assembly. So the orientation is that this, of course, is the back. The dimples that we have um, cut on the CNC, or you may have just marked them off if you did a, a hand layout. Those will be on the outside. So this would be the inside surface, that's the outside surface. So we're going to countersink these. And then the front piece that mates with it has an orientation. Notice that this, there's this dimension and this dimension. The larger dimension goes towards the bottom. So larger and smaller. This is the top, this is the bottom. So they're going to go together like this, corresponding to this older build. Uh, that I did. So like that. So the first thing is to countersink these four holes. I have a bit that's large enough to you know hide this head and I put a piece of tape on it just deep enough to put the head below the surface. So I'm gonna go set up the drill press and get that done. So we have this set up to countersink these holes on the inside of the rear panel to hide these uh, M3s that we're going to be using. These are actually also another thing you have to check is the length of these versus the depth of these blind mounting holes on the front face of the motor. The length of it versus how much you're going to countersink it, again, versus the exact thickness of your material. So these are actually M3 by 14s. These may end up being a little long. We can use M3x12s if they are, or we'll just grind these off, or not a, not a big deal as long as they mount securely. So this one actually has a laser guide on it, which is handy. And as I said, I've got a depth guide of a piece of tape and clamped, got your safety glasses on, of course. And I'm just going to... That's all you need. I'm going to do that for each of these holes, but to show you, all that does is just give the head a place to hide so that you don't end up, you know, bashing your um, bed into the exposed head when it's sticking out. It should be the correct depth also. There shouldn't be a problem with that mounting the motor. Right. So I'll just do the other three and we'll get back to the assembly. 
We're now going to mate these two pieces, the rear panel with these countersinks on the inside and the front piece. And remember, this has an orientation. This with the larger dimension up to the hole is the bottom and this is the top edge with the shorter dimension. We're going to mate these pieces very carefully so that we can do the match drilling. Match drilling, drilling both of the holes for the 10 inch rods is really one of the, the genius parts of the Mantis that that's how you get the, the really good alignment without the entire thing binding up and uh, without any slop you can get very good alignment and thus you can get your precision boards. So we're actually going to do this um, by tactilely or with a, you know, a tactile sense and also visually hanging off the edge here by aligning them visually and by feel and again, if you have CNC cut pieces, they'll line up very well. You may have to do some sanding and fudging if you cut them in another way. So I'm going to hold that there, take my clamp, and then check it in case it didn't move. Okay, so it didn't move. And I'm going to do the other side as well. I may need to move one or the other of these when I move to the drill press in order to clamp it to the drill press bed. But right now these are actually very well aligned for the drilling. Another piece that we're going to need is a little piece of 3 8 inch diameter shoulder bolt. So after I drill one hole, I want to go ahead and knock this 3 8 inch pin through both holes as an extra security to make sure they do not shift in alignment while I make the second hole because it's obviously extremely important that both of these sets of holes be completely matched. So I'm going to move to the drill press and line it up there. Now I can't tell you exactly how you're going to have to clamp this into your drill press because I don't know what kind of drill press you have. It would be a good idea if you could actually use a screw clamp for the one that's closest to the bit. Um, this of course is a 3 8 inch bit for those 3 8 inch rods. And in addition to us having the laser on here, what you want to do is after you get it securely, securely clamped with a waste piece underneath it, you want to bring it down in two directions and look at how the bevel of the bit is touching either your guide mark that you have drawn on there if you have to do a hand layout or the guide hole that has been made by your CNC. And you want to look at it in one direction and make sure that you don't see the bit deflecting and that, and that it's actually touching right where you want it and you want to turn it about 90 degrees and check where the bevel is touching in that direction. So you want to make sure that both of those are accurate. And in this case, because the bed was so large in relation to this piece, I had to swivel the bed way over. So I'm not actually now on the part of the bed that has the hole in it, which is why it's extra important to have that waste piece under there because otherwise I'd be hitting the bed. So everything is aligned, everything is clamped as securely as I can get it. And we're, and I've tested this in both directions. This is all lined up, so I'm just going to drill this piece. And this, of course, is just your standard all-purpose bit. So we drilled one set of matching holes on the front and rear piece simultaneously. And now that we've done that, there's a little bit of a burr there. What I want to do is take this uh, cut off piece of 3 8 inch shoulder bolt and I just want to put it through both those pieces. It doesn't have to go all the way through, but you just want to lock those pieces together before we drill the second hole to, you know, to ensure that these two rods are going to be exactly spaced at the same distance in the front and the rear. That is how you're going to ensure exact um, that they are exactly parallel. So I've got the shoulder bolt knocked through there and we're going to put it up on the drill press and drill the second hole. We 
<clears throat> so we have this uh, pinned together in the first hole and we've got it aligned with the bit to drill the second hole. Now two things I didn't mention was that it is a good idea to have a depth marker so that you know when you threw both pieces and into the waste piece so you know when to stop. And also when you're checking it and you're in those two directions to make sure that it's properly placed, you can use a rubber mallet or even just the handle of the mallet to kind of knock it very gently and do those last minute bit of alignment before you really clamp it down tight. And then double check that alignment in both directions. And that seems to be good, so we're going to drill this. We've got our set of what should be perfectly match drilled holes now for these rods. These are the 10 inch rods. We need two of them for this part. And we have our rubber mallet here. So we're going to very carefully tap them, get a little started there, and very carefully tap them into the rear piece. That's good. Okay. All right. And after I tap the rods through the back piece. I want to put the bushings on. You don't want to forget to do this. And the bushings slide on the rods, as you would expect. Two on each side. And once those are on, I'm going to take the front piece, and remember, large dimension here, small dimension at the top, and line it up with the rods, and tap it down in sort of a balanced fashion. Just visually notice that you're doing it evenly. Little gentle taps until it is together. All right. Now these two pieces are probably going to be skew. There, so the, the rods are now skew. So you need to push that down and make it at least nominally parallel between the front and back. And I can still I can see now that it still isn't. So that however will have to get fixed as we do the final assembly. This this is the left hand panel. It's going to countersink these four holes for the heads of the motor mounts just like it did before. Now we're going to do essentially the same thing for the two side panels. This one we're designating as the left, which has the larger motor mount that fits. Again, remember it fits this recess. We want to make sure that it does fit. And so we've already gone ahead and on the inside we have countersunk the four mounting holes. Now the two holes for the 3 8 inch rods, the 10 inch 3 8 inch rods, are this hole right here, directly above the motor, and this hole here, which looks really close to the motor, but that actually is the correct one. Depending on whether you lay these out by hand or again what DXF file you used, if you're using a CNC, you may have these. Ignore these. These are vestigial. They're from, uh, I believe, an earlier iteration. So what you want are these two holes. And those are going to be the ones that we drill 
for the, uh, that we match drill for those rods. And we're going to use essentially the same process. We're going to make the pieces. And on this piece, these fronts really have no relevance for the construction. They are open. They're this piece right here. So when you made it, you want to make the back edge because that's going to attach here to this piece. And of course, you want to make the bottom edge because that's going to make the base plate. So make those, and if these happen not to make, that's okay. They could even be cut on a curve or whatever. So we're going to make these up, drill one hole, pin that 3 8 inch hole, double check all the alignment, and then drill the second 3 8 inch hole. And then, of course, we're going to tap in the rods, put the bushings on, and tap on the second half. And that will be our side assembly for the x-axis. Tap in the okay, it's flush. Second ten inch rod. Well, it's easy glory. That one as well. Another set of four bushings. get them started. Sure, these are as square as you can get them for now. 